Hey guys, how are you? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to maximize the chance of you landing your very first web developer or developer job. All right, let's start with the conclusion. And the first thing you have to consider is that in the development world, they're looking for people who are interested in the type of code that they're writing and people who are willing to learn. So how do you demonstrate this? I assume you've done your fundamental training. So important that you learn your fundamentals. I tell people over and over again, if you want to get into software development, you want to learn quickly. It's not the project-based courses that are going to get you there quickly. First, you understand your fundamentals. Then you do a couple of project-based courses, just a couple, not many. And then you go out there and you do a couple of free jobs to get your feet wet in the real world. Little jobs and just do them as stashes. Do them for free. Consider them part of your training. You see people will go to $10,000, $20,000 boot camps so that they can get the stash training. You don't need the boot camp to do that. You can do that on your own. Get your fundamentals, do one or two projects, then go out there and get a couple of jobs working as a freelancer or a stagiaire. So you got your fundamentals. And next thing you got to do is you got to put up a website. Now, if you're selling yourself as, as a web developer, you better have a website. So you put up a website, make sure it looks good. If you're not a designer type, you're more of a coder site, a coder type, then use a template. Use a template, doesn't matter. You're not selling yourself as a great designer, you're selling yourself as a coder in that situation. Whatever you do, make sure the site looks good and make sure it looks clean. Next thing that you do is you take a couple of the project-based courses that uh, got you up to speed and you put those and profile those on your website. Now, if you're looking for jobs where they're probably going to need DevOps, be sure to put the code also in some GitHub account that's public that you can profile on your website as well. Now, let's talk about the project-based courses. Now, you've done your fundamentals, so you know your, we'll talk web stack, you know your HTML5, CS3, you know your JavaScript, you're comfortable with that, you're comfortable with server-side programming versus client-side, you're comfortable with the basics of databases and so on. So now you're ready to do something project-wise. So what do you do? Because there's so many choices out there. There are so many technologies to choose from, right? You can go, in terms of backend, you can go with Python and Django. Django is a framework, Python is a language. You go PHP and Laravel. PHP is a language, Laravel is a framework. You can go with Node.js with Express.js. You can go with uh, Ruby and Rails, I suppose. You can Java and Spring and .NET with C Sharp. There's so many out there. How about front end libraries, big libraries like React, like Angular, like Vue, right? Even old jQuery. Which ones do you learn? A lot of people, when they're new to the whole development game, they get overwhelmed with all the choices and all the opportunities, uh, well, opportunities, all the choices out there. So what do you what do you learn? What do you learn? Well, don't worry. You don't have to learn all of them. In fact, you don't have to learn any of them until you figure out where you want to go in terms of your job prospects. So what do you do? You got your foundations. You got your fundamentals. So you start looking around at the local businesses or wherever you want to work, you look at what's typically used in that region. In Germany, you might find is .NET. In the UK, it might be Express.js with Node.js. In uh, Thailand, it might be PHP and Laravel. I don't know. It depends on where you are. In, in Silicon Valley, it might be Java Spring, right? You have to look around, see where, where you are, where you want to work, what the demand is. Once you figure that out, then you learn that. You learn that. You don't necessarily have to take a course or buy a book. You could, but you don't have to because if you're properly trained in the fundamentals, for you to learn, for example, Node.js, no big deal. You go to the Node website and it'll have a step-by-step -step tutorial how to download, how to install, how to do the Hello World in Node, and then how to do some basic projects. And you got your Node set up and it's working. You're kind of comfortable with the basics of it. Then go to YouTube and do uh, find a node. How do you create a Twitter clone with node tutorial? There's, uh, you know, how to create a uh, Facebook a basic uh, blog with node uh, tutorial. There's, there's all kinds out there. And uh, so you get those couple of projects down. You put them on your GitHub. You put them on your website. And then what you do is then you approach prospective employers. You say, listen, I said, I, I'm new, but... I've done this and this courses. I'm, I've got a good foundation in these languages. 
and because I'm interested in working for you, I went out and I learned Node on my own. Here are my projects, here's my GitHub. I love to have the opportunity. That's going to impress people. So why do I know that's going to impress people? Because I've been hiring developers and designers since the 1990s and consistently since that time. So what I look for in new developers is somebody who A, they know their foundations well, and B, they have uh, at least a basic experience, or at least know the basics of whatever li libraries and frameworks I happen to be using. So if I was using Node.js and Express, I want to see somebody at least taking that effort. I would love the fact that somebody said to me, I, Steph, I checked out that you were using Node and Express, so I learned it, and these are little mini projects I built. Here's my GitHub. Check it out. Now, if they're well-trained in the fundamentals, even if they've just learned Express and Node just for the interview with me, if they're good in their fundamentals, they're going to have clean code, they're going to have well-organized code, and they will have built out their demo projects properly. Now, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to do... Uh, just copy a tutorial that you find online. You can do that, but modify it and be always transparent with people you're dealing with. So don't don't pretend that you wrote it from scratch. Say this, I used this tutorial here, I found this on YouTube, or I found this on the note site, and I modified it like this. Be honest that way. And again, that will pay dividends, because when I'm looking to hire somebody, I want somebody who's transparent and honest, and somebody who takes initiative. So that's how I'd approach that. So I would approach, if you're approaching me, say, here, this is what I've done. Here's my GitHub. Check out the code. I see his code's clean. I see his documentation's clean. I see he's on his forthright. Maybe just somebody I would hire. You never know. So I'm just using Node as an example. You have to choose whether it could be PHP, it could be Java, whatever, whatever it is. So for example, with my web stack course, I don't teach Node, but I teach JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript. I teach HTML5, CSS3. I teach good coding practices. I teach databases, SQL. And to teach server-side programming, I teach PHP. But with all those skills that you learn in my foundation training, for you to go learn Node it's not hard at all. Actually, pretty easy. For you to go learn Python Django, not hard at all. It's actually pretty easy because a lot of these languages and frameworks share very uh, a lot of the same principles, a lot of the same techniques. Of course, there's differences. But once you have your fundamentals, it's really easy to expand in this direction or another direction. One of the analogies I'd like to use is like being a musician. Now, I could teach you how to play 10 songs on the guitar and you know 10 songs and you'll learn a little bit of fundamentals doing that. But if you learn how to play guitar, you'll learn the scales and notes and how to timing, you learn all the techniques of music then and reading music, then you could play every song ever written in the world because all you have to do is look up the, uh, uh, the score, the, not the score, but look at the, uh, you know, the, the notes for the song. Oh yeah, this song is C, D, E, E, F, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you be able to play any song pretty easily. So same thing with programming. You learn your fundamentals, you be able to jump into this framework, that framework, that framework, et cetera, et cetera. Like I've told people in my own career, I've written commercial software in eight, nine languages. I believe it's nine languages, been, you know, it's over 20 years. So, And I would just learn frameworks and I would learn languages as I needed to. I didn't go in there knowing all these things. No, I would just walk in and because I had a good understanding of my, fa my foundations, I could learn new languages. By the way, if you, this is all new to you, the first language that you learn is by far the hardest. And it just gets much, in, much easier with every su uh, successive language. The first framework that you learn will be the hardest, and then it just gets easier and easier with each one you learn after that. I can learn a new programming language and a framework in just in a few days and be commercially productive. Not because I'm a genius, just because I I've, have a good grounding in my foundations and I have some experience. So those are my tips, my primary tips in terms of getting your first development jobs. Another thing you should consider, something I also mentioned to people, have good communication skills, which means you speak well, you speak to the point, you speak clearly. Good writing skills, again, to the point, clearly, not long paragraphs of text. People like business people, people in management positions don't have time to read two pages. They just want very clean to the, to the point. And they also want somebody who can communicate well, who can listen well, 
was responsive because when you're working in a company, you're working in a team, you have to have those type of interpersonal communication skills. Very important. I personally rather have somebody who is uh, a good programmer but has good communication skills rather than somebody who is a fantastic pro programmer and has terrible interpersonal or communication skills. The good programmer, decent programmer, really good communication skills will do much better in the group than the genius uh, programmer who can't communicate at all. So let me end this and just uh, mention the steps. First, you learn your foundations. Foundation is very important. They, they literally form the foundations of your career. Then you figure out what skills are in demand, what libraries people are looking for, et cetera, et cetera. And then what you do there is you go do tutorials and walkthroughs on those particular libraries or a particular language, but, you know, in terms of whichever company you want to work for, you want to work for whichever area you want to work for. Like I said, in Germany, it might be all .NET or it might be all PHP Laravel, who knows? So you, whatever it is, you learn it, do a couple mini projects, put up a website, put it out, put it on your GitHub so you can show your GitHub, people, you know, a lot of places are going to want you to be able to understand DevOps operations. And then you go in with that. And you may have to hit 10 or so employers before you get a job. If you hit five or six and you're not getting any bites, then offer to do a stash for free, a month or two for free. Do it. It's free training. Just say, I'll work for free. I want to show you that I can, I can be productive for you. If not, it's okay. Let me go. Be accommodating to your prospective employer and they're going to be much more likely to want to hire you. But in terms of you getting hired, please consider this. You may be perfectly qualified for a job, but you may be reaching out to a company at the wrong time. I have had to reject really good people who want to work for me because I simply did not have a slot for them at that particular moment in time. Maybe if they would have contacted me a year later or six months before, they would have got the job. But it's just timing is, is a factor as well. So if you get rejected the first time or the 10th time, try not to let it get you down. There's all kinds of factors can impact that. That being said, when and if you do ever get rejected, you may get your first job, who knows? Maybe lucky. But whenever you do get rejected, ask them politely, could you please tell me what it was I was missing? Why I didn't get the job? What you would have liked to have seen in my resume or what, how I presented myself? Most people will answer you and be happy to help you out. You may find out they just say they may just say no. We would have hired you, but we just it was not the fit at this particular moment. Or they may say, well, you know, we didn't like the way you did this or that, and take it as free advice. So yeah, I'll close with that. So I hope this helps, and um, there you go.